Yes, everybody. I saw that David Peterson got the save last night for the New York Mets. You don't need to comment down below about that. What you should comment yes, you down do. below about is Mark Zinno, fresh from uh, his visit to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. He brought us home some winners, yes, uh, not did. only for our clients. We threaded the needle again, Mark. You teased the Bucks, correct? I, I did. Have that I, my client play yesterday was a teaser with the Buccaneers. Uh, and the Bengals coming up on Sunday, getting eight and a half at home against the Ravens. Uh, that's a tease line, obviously, two and a half. But uh, you and I sort of were on opposite sides where I teased the Buccaneers up to seven and a half. There ended up being a bad line as the went up to eight and a half by or, or two and a half for game time, uh, nonetheless. But it was an exciting game. Great to be in the building. Uh, and it was one of those games where um, my play yesterday, my half of the double play, uh, Baker Mayfield, to stay under 242 and a half passing yards. Didn't think it had a chance after the first half. I was texting him like, unders are dead. All unders are dead. Everything, like I, I could just see the way the game was unfolding from the very beginning, the pace of it and everything else. And it was like, this thing is, Baker Mayfield had like 165 passing yards in the first half, ended the game with 180. I was like, how did, yeah. I, how did I win that one? So, hey, look, we're back. We're back, baby. We are back. We're back. Another two and one day on the morning wager. Now twenty six and thirteen. Our last thirty nine selections on the show. That's sixty seven percent. Now my half of the double play was dead from the start. I, I said the under for the yeah. game. That did not do well. Yeah, it was, it was, was a very high call. scoring affair. However, three per, three percent winner on the Falcons. Kirk, I tweeted last night. I don't know if the Falcons are good, but Kirk Cousins is great. This man um, is a fantastic yeah. free agent signing. Five hundred yards. This man yes. plays for. You know, he's the he's the only person to throw for 400 yards and three touchdowns in a game for three different teams. That's huh? crazy. That is? Well, I mean, I mean the, in the old, in the good old days, good quote, unquote, don't, don't, yeah, don't, quarterbacks don't didn't switch teams. Right. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was it was a big no, deal for good no. quarterback switch teams. Right. Uh, but nonetheless, he was, he was excellent last night. Um, that Darnell Mooney drop. Uh, literally had that whole <laughs> building a gasp. Oh, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I, I thought it was over. I thought I was done at that point. You were in good shape with the teaser, but I thought my Falcons bet was dead. But that is the NFL, and that was Thursday. Okay, by the way, we also won our first five under bet on that Mets-Brewers game. Okay. More Beautiful on call. the Major League, bit. more, yes, good. If we should have well, bet the under I, half a run. I mean, we, we, uh, just to peel back the curtain, you know, when BP and I decide the, the, the best bet for the show. Yes. Keep your shirt on. Okay. I'll take, I'll, I'll do all the clothing, clothing removal here. Um, but nonetheless, when we, when we kind of talked through a lot of different things, it was interesting because validate this for me, but when we first started looking at that game, we were trying to find ways to actually bet the over, right? We were looking at mm -hmm. ways to see if we could figure out a way that there was, that it would go over. Cause we thought that runs were going to be scored. And the more we started talking it out and the deeper we got into the handicap, you know, at one point I said, I said, PP, we this, this, we got to take the under. Like, if we're mm -hmm. getting this number, four and a half, mm -hmm. we got to take the under. Like, I mean, it was just, it was one of those things where, you, you, and, and I'm just saying this to everybody else, you know, despite my my poor record as of late, but, you know, you keep your process, right? And you keep working through what makes you successful as a capper. And, and if you believe process over results, and I do, that you're, if your process is good, the results will bear themselves out over time, uh, despite the highs and the lows that you may go through in this industry. But you know, again, the, the moral of the story is, guys, that, that that if you work through your handicap a lot, sometimes you, more often than not, you should get to the right result. And that's how we did on our best bet yesterday. We did. And we will have a best bet for the LDS coming up at the bottom of the show in our best bet segment. But at the top, we are talking college football, something we have not done all yeah. week. And that is changing right now. Uh, for our double play, uh, nothing on the Friday games from us today. Limited card. If you want a Friday play, go over, check out the Power Five. I did do uh, talk about UNLV Syracuse, but we're talking Saturday, Mark Zinno. Uh, the ACC, NC State is up against it, man. And they are hosting yeah. Wake Forest. This is a game you wanted to tell the people about. How are you betting this one? Look, last week, uh, I talked to you and a mutual friend of ours when I saw the number come out against NIU. And NIU was a ranked team last week when, when NC State had played them at home. Um, and it was around – I think it opened at 7.5. It settled at 7. There might have been – at one point, I think there were some 6 and halfs popping up. So it depends on the number because they won by 7, whether you pushed one or lost. But I asked the question, is this the ultimate buy-low spot on NC State? 
Well, I found out the answer is now no, because we have now hit a new low uh, of this being the ultimate buy low spot on NC State at NC State minus four at home against Wake Forest. Look, uh, NC State, Grayson McCall has been injured. So, you know, uh, we've had C.J. Bailey at quarterback, who has now played in four different games this year um, and started last game. Now, again, he has another full week of preparation to get ready for a Wake Forest defense that it's fair to say is God awful, um, like offensively bad uh, in, in, in the way that they, I got they perform. I, I mean, it, it's, there's no getting around it. I mean, it, this is a team um, that is 127th in the nation in total defense. The last three weeks, they've allowed 31, 40 and 41. And one of those was to you, you uh, Louisiana last week uh, in Wake Forest in a game where they were only favored by three uh, lost 41, 38. So um, this is also Wake Forest's first road game of the year. Uh, these spots, I loved getting teams going out on their first road game. Second conference game for Wake Forest. They lost the opener to Virginia 31-30. to 30. Uh, NC State's defense should do more than enough um, to contain Hank Bachman and company, um, who doesn't really, they haven't really been throwing a lot. I mean, I would worry about Claiborne, their running back. He had, he took a couple of big plays to the house last week. That's probably NC State's biggest challenge defensively is to slow down the Wake Forest running game. But at minus four, I think we have to buy a low spot for NC State. They got to win this game. If they lose this game and fall to three and three and 0 oh and two in the conference, I don't know if it's recoverable as far as any idea of sort of a sneak into the college football playoffs. So, and even at that, you know, you're talking about not even possibly being in the ACC championship game. So not without a lot of help, especially the way Miami is playing and, and Clemson is playing. So nonetheless, there big, big spot for NC State here. I'll lay the four, like him at home, despite you get, you know, a backup quarterback here in C.J. Bailey. But I think another week of him taking reps under center as a freshman, getting a full week of practice should do them enough against a really bad Wake Forest defense. That is Mark Zeno taking a short home favorite there in Raleigh with NC State against Wake Forest. I'm taking a home dog. Minnesota, give me the points against USC. Do you know the last time USC won a game east of the Mississippi River, Mark Zeno? It would be in the central or eastern time zones. I think it was during the Bush administration, the other Bush. Uh uh, no, it was actually, well, I believe it was, well, that was during the Obama administration. It would be a game in Syracuse in 2012 was the last time. They have now lost USC. Uh, is it eight or nine straight times they've lost? It's regardless. It has been a long time since they have won a game uh, in the Central Eastern time zones. Um, so, yeah, I think, and Lincoln Riley is a road favorite. He stinks. Eight, 18, and one against the spread. So uh, being in Minnesota here in what promises to be a low-scoring affair, a tight game, yeah, I think Minnesota plus the points is the only way you can go, especially, Mark, last two weeks, USC has, tr in, in their first two conference games, as they're now a Big Ten member, they've trailed by double digits both games. Michigan came out. And basically ran a service academy style offense against USC. The USC defense, which is improved under Lynn, no doubt about it, but they knew the run was coming, right? And what do they do? They allowed 290 yards rushing at 6.2 yards per carry. So I think this Minnesota offense can find success on the ground. Last week against a Wisconsin team starting a backup quarterback, USC was down double digits at home in the first half. Wisconsin stinks. Oh, by the way, three last three weeks, USC has gotten to face a backup quarterback. They faced Wisconsin's backup. Michigan had made the quarterback change. And uh, you go back even further, Utah State was starting a backup quarterback. When USC killed them, USC could have lost to LSU. Minnesota's got a good quarterback with Brosmer, the transfer from New Hampshire. I don't like this roll the boat gimmick from P.J. Fleck. I think that's kind of stupid. But uh, I think Minnesota's the right side here. I'll take the points. Uh, in uh, what is it, TCF Bank Stadium or whatever. Give me the Golden Gophers as the home dog. And yes, it is nine consecutive losses for USC as I was trying to find that desperately in my notes in the Central and Eastern time zones. Minnesota, for those of you not aware, is in the Central time zone. Uh, I want to ask you real quick, Mark, about before we get to baseball and talk about what we've going on this 
weekend at wagertalk.com. Some of the bigger games this weekend. There's, yeah, I just talked about a home dog. It feels like there's a lot. It's one of those weekends where there's a lot of trendy home dogs, right? I see a lot of love for South Carolina. I see a lot of love for Vanderbilt because the spot, Alabama off the big win against Georgia. South Carolina's playing Ole Miss for the record. Uh, Arkansas is hosting Tennessee. And then in the late night slate, ESPN yeah. College Game Day will be in Berkeley. I see a lot of love for Cal against the Miami, Florida team that, quite frankly, was a little lucky to beat Virginia Tech two Thursdays ago. Is there? What do you make of some of these trendy home dogs? Is there one that you would exercise caution with more than the other? Is there one that you like more than the other? Just sort of paint this I mean, whole thing with one broad stroke. I well, let me say this much: I don't like South Carolina. It's all miss or pass. There, there's not a way that I can get to the window on South Carolina uh, again. And what you're looking at with South Carolina, like if South Carolina doesn't go into Lexington and beat Kentucky the way they did which a game that was marred by Kentucky turnovers. Um, we are viewing this South Carolina game completely differently. And I got to tell you, honestly, I think that number probably sits closer to two touchdowns than where it is right now. I'm not crazy about laying, you know, close to 10 points with uh, Ole Miss on the road, but I, I can't get there on South Carolina. I just can't do it. Um, I, I don't, I don't think that there's a path to them uh, to cover that number. Vanderbilt is interesting to me. Um, and look, if you've watched this show and you've listened to me and you, you know, kind of the way I, I look at games through a game script standpoint, um, you and I talked a little bit about Vanderbilt because I asked you in the beginning of the week from a spot perspective, uh, I would only play Vanderbilt in the first half. There's no reason to play them for the full game. There literally isn't. Um, now I don't like the number because it's at like 12 and a half or 13. Like I would really ideally like 14 and a half where it's two full touch and three scores mm -hmm. that they need be ahead uh, as opposed to just two scores. If Vanderbilt can't keep it to under two touchdowns for the first half, there's not a world where Vanderbilt's offense goes, no, nope, we've now we've figured out Alabama's defense. We're coming right back on these guys. Like that's <laughs> Vanderbilt's not Georgia. That's not happening. Yeah. They, they so, don't have Carson back. Yeah. Right. They, they, I mean, they, they, they just, they're not equipped to be able to, to play catch up against a team like Alabama. The only way that you hope that, Vanderbilt stays in it. If Alabama is sleepy, you know, it's what is it? A new it's a noon start, right? Is it an early start or is it three o'clock? Uh, it's 4 15. It's yeah. not even a noon start. That Alabama is just flat when they come out. Um, and they're not serious about the opponent, and they're allowing Vanderbilt to hang around, or you know, a turnover happens early for Alabama, and and all of a sudden, you know, Vandy goes up seven-nothing. Like that's the game script you need for them to hang around for the first half. There absolutely is a world where Alabama is only up by seven or ten at half. And then the, the door is open for the second half and they steamroll the hell out of them because it's like, okay, we're done playing around with you guys. We're just going to be better. That game script is more likely, but th there's not a game script for me that I can come up with where Vanderbilt turns around and is down by, you know, 17 and a half. Well, now it's time for us to get rolling, boys. Let's go Commodores. No, that, that, that's not reality. So I would never play. I'd take Vanderbilt in the first half if you really felt like they had a shot. I, I I just don't know that they do. Um, you know, the kid at quarterback Diego Pavla Pavia from it was the kid he's New Mexico New, New Mexico State VP where he played New Mexico last year. State New, New Mexico, Mexico State. State. I mean, last kid can sling it. Yeah, the kid could sling it. Um, uh, absolutely can sling it. So uh, I, I there, there is a world where again he could come out early and and catch Alabama off guard. That's about it. Um, Arkansas I think is a much more palatable favorite in this spot. I mean, Tennessee has yet to have a flat game, right? They yeah. really just have it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Oklahoma defensively presents some challenges for a lot of teams last week, which is why, but again, this is a game where they are up 19 to three at half, right? Cause Tennessee's defense is actually good this year. They're up 22 to three at the end. They were never really pushed to the limit. So could Arkansas's defense keep Tennessee below 30? I think so, especially at home. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Sam Theoretically, is a good trench coach, but you know what's the best offense that Arkansas has faced this year? That's OK State, right? Um, yeah, and their offense isn't very good. They, oh, Arkansas the gave point. that game away. They gave that game away with turnovers. Point they is, should be. The point is, yeah. look, they, they played Oklahoma State, Auburn, and A and M. These are not like offenses that are even in the same class as Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem for me with Arkansas. Like again, it's like one of those things where. 
the number's too short for me to take it in the first half because it's only a one score game, right? Um, but I don't like Arkansas for four quarters against Tennessee's defense. Like it, it, that, that's too much time for that and, offense to continue to score points. And Tennessee's off a bye too, which is not great for the yeah, Hogs. I mean, uh, really I, Bobby Petrino's offense has got to be operated full soldiers. I'll just say this: the odds makers, Mark, have gotten so good at identifying at the, spot. the spots yep. that people that they know people are going to want to bet. These are spots that used to be priced yeah. so much more favorable. But I'm look. You talked about Vandy, and I'll just I'll loop the Cal game in Miami, and then we'll move on to Major League Baseball. The I think the Cal line and the Vandy line they're both short. You're not getting good. Compared to my power ratings, Cal and Vandy should be much bigger underdogs than what they are. Yes. They're priced because the odds makers know. Everyone knows they want to bet those teams because of the spot. Vandy off the bye, obviously, with Alabama off the Georgia game. You, you couldn't ask for a better spot. They're at home. Right. But Vandy is just nowhere near as good as Bama. And 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 I think Miami's a good football team that got its wake-up call with Va, Va Tech was this flat spot. I don't think it's going to be a flat spot with ESPN college game day cameras around even if it is late night and they're all the way across the country for a conference game. Yes. Uh, one more real quick. That is a fishy line, but Clemson only laying 14 and a half at Florida state. Uh, after what we've seen from their offense, the last three weeks, 66, 59 and 40 points. Um, Clemson's going out for their first true road game. Remember the game against Georgia was a neutral site game um, in the beginning of the year. DJU now on the bench, if he's injured or whatever it is. But, you know, is it addition by subtraction for Florida State? Are they going to get better offensively with DJU out of the way? That 14 and a half feels like it's way too small. Uh, I would I would have made this number 17 and a half. Um, I, I don't want to back Florida State because I just it, there's a lot of variance in knowing that what a quarterback change is. But it just feels like laying 14 and a half on the road that Clemson may be due for a little bit of a, a, a flat game um, given what they've done the last three weeks. So tough spot there for the Tigers, I think. I would take the points with the Knolls in that game, believe it or not, because yeah. of course I would. And number two, and number two, look at the box score last week, Clemson and Stanford. That was a misleading final. Stanford was like, here, Clemson, take the ball, please. Just drive down the yeah. short field and, and score points on us. Yes, so that it. was a misleading final there. So that's a lot of college football that we got just set for tomorrow just to rehash our double play. Mark liked NC State over Wake Forest. I liked Minnesota yep. plus the points against USC. Comment down below with your favorite college football plays for Saturday or Friday, for that matter. We would love to hear from you. Keep those comments coming. It's been great all week long. Your feedback. And you also can let us know how you'll be betting the Major League Baseball playoffs. The LDS get underway tomorrow. All four series are in action. Mark, we are taking a look at the first game here. Tigers Guardians, the Tigers, the toast of the town, will roll in. Just 20 minutes north of me at Progressive Field. Do we think the dream dies in game one against Tanner Bybee and the guards? I know you you guys in the public there probably like the Tigers story. I don't. Go away. I'm tired of you already. Okay? Uh, you <laughs> don't belong. You don't belong here. You, you, you're not a playoff team. So go away. Um, look, you told me something before the show that I thought is very interesting. The, the Guardians are priced – more heavy as a favorite in game one than they are for the entire series, yes. which is pretty telling um, that odds makers are telling you that if Cleveland doesn't win game one, watch that series price flip to Detroit being a favorite. Yes. I, Cause Scooble will like, pitch two of the next four games. Scooble's pitching right. two and then, and then five if necessary. Right. So if you believe the Tigers are, are going to win this series or could win this series, bet them before this game, you know, goes tomorrow because if the Tigers win game one, I think Cleveland you said it was around minus one, 120, minus 125 for the series. Don't be surprised yes. to see that flip or at least make the Tigers even money um, to win the series after game one. And the fact that Bybee, the best pitcher for Cleveland, maybe not the best pitcher, but one of their more consistent pitchers on the mound. Look, here's the numbers on Bybee, right? They're 22 and nine with him on the mound this year, straight up. They average 4.9 runs when he pitches. The recipe is there for them. Bybee has faced the Tigers four times this year. The first two starts, he was okay, you know, uh, not great. The last two starts against him, he was very good. Um, but three of those last four starts all came in the month of July. One pre-All-Star break, two of them 
in a five-day span before the end of July. But that's the last time he's seen him. They were both very good. The numbers for Detroit are kind of head-scratching because this is just not an offense you want to trust in any size, way, shape, or form. Cleveland's offense over the last month has been very middle of the road at home. It's been very middle of the road overall. Runs could be at a premium here. But I'm going to back Bybee. I think we, we we have to look at game one as the game that Cleveland has to win. If they lose it, momentum is not going to be on their side. Even if they get a split at home, Detroit going back home for two with Scubal on the mound. And if, even if Scubal pitches game two, imagine going down all one with Scubal on the mound for game two. You feel like yeah. you're dead in the water. So this is a must-win spot here for Cleveland. We'll back them on the money line here in game one. Cleveland Guardians, my Cleveland Guardians, are the show best bet. Seven days for $77. That is the special offer we are currently running at wagertalk.com. What a deal. That gets you not only all NFL, not only all college football, not only all MLB, but any other sport that your favorite capper does. So head on over to Mark's page, head on over to my page. You can lock in both of us seven days for just $77 if you'd like. Um all of my football plays should be up by lunchtime today here on Friday. I already have my 4% NFL game of the week. A little slow. My college plays are already posted for the people. Oh, okay. Good Good to know. Well, you know what? You know what? Now that you now that you shot, you, you pot shot at me there, you know what I'm going to say? Number one <laughs> in the NFL since the start of the regular season. We are nine and two with NFL sides so far. That is 82%, sir. 82%. I lured. We're doing well in NFL and college, so hop on board. Right. What do you have? Your college? What col t Tell people about your college card, which is already available. That's it's that's, it's quite the card. It's a very good size too. It's a good size card. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> I have. Uh, we talked a lot about the big games, guys. I got to play in the rest of the SEC slate. Two other SEC games. The two other big SEC games are out there. I have a play in both of them. Uh, three plays in total on the card here, available at wt.buzzmz right now. So. After you like and subscribe here, go there because it's a nice place to be. And we're back. I feel like we're back. I don't want to get out of my skis, but nonetheless, we feel pretty good after the last two days. Finally, we washed all the ick off of us, and uh, we are ready and raring to go for the weekend here. So uh, we will get uh, the, the college card up, and the, the NFL card will follow sh shortly thereafter. So uh, wt.buzz slash mz. Lots of winners on tap from Mark and I this weekend. You know where to go. And like the man said, please like, comment, and subscribe here as we keep dishing out the free winners. Again, Mark and I are combined 67% here on the Morning Wager. Our last 13 shows, 26 and 13 overall. That's going to do it, everybody. We wish you a very happy and profitable weekend. And until next time, well, let's cast some winners. <laughs>